offshore lies at the heart of the modern economy. Tax havens have become integrated into the, what's now called globalization to such an extent that the vast majority of international trade and international investment is rooted through tax havens on paper. Uh, and this is for two purposes. First of all, it's to evade or avoid tax, and secondly, it's to evade or avoid uh, regulation. The extraordinary thing is how little attention has been paid to this by the political communities, and probably because these tax havens are protected and supported by the most powerful countries in the world. The banks are very, very prominent players here, uh, particularly British and American banks. Um, then you have uh, certain jurisdictions like the British Virgin Islands, which when you look at them on paper, you realize the British Virgin Islands is one of the biggest investors, if not the biggest investor, in mainland China. One has to ask the question, how did that happen? What's going on here? And that's because uh, Chinese elites, Chinese politicians, Chinese business people are using the British Virgin Islands to shift capital out of China and then reinvest it back into China, apparently as foreign direct investment. And if you look at the case of India, you'll see that India has a, a similar structure where the vast majority of foreign direct investment going into India comes from Mauritius, uh, another tax haven in the Indian Ocean. What's going on there? Again, the Indian elites by and large have shifted their capital offshore and reinvested it back into India, apparently it's foreign direct investment. Why do they do this? Because they can get all the tax breaks that go with foreign direct investment. In my own research, looking, for example, at Barclays' activities in, in, in Africa, you'll see that Barclays have been very influential in trying to push African politicians to create offshore financial centres in Ghana, for example, uh, in Botswana, um, in Kenya. The huge damage done by tax havens actually impacts worst on the poorer countries in the south. And that's because a huge proportion of their mineral wealth, gold, copper and other hydrocarbon wealth, has simply been shifted out of these countries through tax havens and into the capital markets, the major capital markets of the north. Uh, and tax havens have been right at the centre of this massive shift of wealth. Uh, in the case of Africa, it's estimated to be heading for 900 billion over the last 25 years. It's a massive sum and it vastly, uh, it's vastly greater than the total aid flowing in the other direction. It's also criminalized a large part of the economic development of the South because it's enabled the despots and the dictators to shift their wealth offshore into Switzerland, into uh, Luxembourg, into the United Kingdom, into London. Um, with relative impunity, and virtually everyone in these countries knows this is happening. I think it's really important that we bring this open secret to the heart of a global discussion about what kind of economy do we, do we need to meet public needs, to meet, in other words, public interest. What kind of democracy do we want which can overcome the problem of this very anti-democratic uh, misuse of tax havens? Um, and I think that to do this, it's really important that the public understand the scale, the scale of operation, the extent to which companies are using tax havens. Um, I think they'd be shocked, um, in some respects enraged, and galvanised into taking action if they understood just how massive this offshore economy has become. The City of London, in particular, wanting to rebuild its preeminent position in the global financial markets by acting as an offshore financial centre and tax haven. And it's not coincidence that the vast majority of the small island tax havens, which people, the general public, think of as tax havens, whether it's the Cayman Islands or the British Virgin Islands or the Channel Islands or the or Bermuda, vast majority of them have the Queen's head on their stamp. And that's not coincidence because this was a purposeful carefully constructed process of the City of London recreating its preeminence by creating all of these satellite centres which would attract money from different parts of the world and feed it through into London. What we find in the 
finance world is they're able to exert much stronger political pressure by saying, if you try to tax us, or you try to regulate us, we'll leave London, we'll get out of here, we'll go to Luxembourg, or we'll go to Zurich, or we'll go to Dublin. Uh, and that threat normally means that politicians are extremely unwilling to tackle them. If you ever go to the Cayman Islands as a journalist, don't ever start asking questions, any questions at all. Because the law provides for anyone who asks any questions, which might lead to the revealing of secrets, is themselves guilty of a crime. I'll give you an example of a company that I'm looking at at the moment. It's a, a Russian business in agriculture. So it, you know, the, it owns land, and on that land it's maybe farming. Then all these parcels of land are all wrapped up and owned by a Cyprus company, call it Cyprus Finance Co. And then that company is owned by a Luxembourg company called Luxembourg Refinance Co. And then above this, there's another Cyprus company. And above that, there are four Belize companies. And above that are the actual owners. So you see the way this company, it, it's just farming. It looks to you and me, you know, if you were there, it was just farming. But that farming, that real world onshore activity has been networked, mediated through all these different levels, all these networks of tax havens, all these networks of tax exchange agreements. If you want to look at how structural offshore is to the global economy, look at the things that the offshore world facilitates that are structural to our, to our world. We have money laundering, corruption, poverty, aid dependence, weak governance, bad business practices, hidden interests hiding behind offshore fronts, monopolies, debt is a huge offshore dimension to debt, the hiding away of debt. It's not just hiding away wealth, it's hiding away debt as well. There must be transparency about where money is, who owns it, where it's structured, who's owed what, who's opening a company, who owns a company. Why not? I mean, why should it be secret? Why should it be secret? Give me a good reason why your company should be secret. Your ownership of your company should be secret unless you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. Intellectual property is wherever you want it to be. Uh, if uh, somebody patents a drug or does something, you know, with a, an invention, uh, before the invention is made commercial, uh, typically what they do is transfer it to a company in an offshore jurisdiction and tell the tax authority wherever they're operating, look, we have uh, uh, this patent, but it wasn't worth anything because we hadn't commercialized it yet. So it went for very little money to this offshore subsidiary. Now, when they start commercializing, and there's a lot of money at hand, the money all flows to offshore. And because of our system, uh, money isn't taxed, offshore money isn't taxed, until it's repatriated. And uh, it can be years and years and years, and it can be moved around, so maybe it's never repatriated. We've just had the situation where an American company, the largest U.S. bank, J.P. Morgan Chase, lost somewhere between two and nine billion dollars. Now, the stunning thing is that those losses were done in London by the main treasury operation in the bank. Now, why would you put the main treasury operation of the biggest bank in the United States in London? And the answer is because the cops can't look at it. The regulators can't see it. 
the U.S. government isn't there to control it. And the only reason we found out about it was they lost their shirts. They're a bunch of idiots. The problem at bottom is if they lose their shirts by enough, they're going to come back to the government and say, help us, we're sinking, and you can't afford to let us go down. It is a competitor of foreign corporation business. It charges good-sized fees to these corporations, and the fees carry about a third of the state budget. So Delaware is unique in the United States in not having a sales tax, and I don't believe it has an income tax either. And if you were to talk to a Delaware politician and say, look, you've got to clean up this corporate business, they'd laugh because they're saying, but look, this is why our people don't have to pay any tax. Well, the answer ought to be, well, the rest of us are paying a lot of tax money, so uh, maybe you should clean up your act so we don't have to pay as much. Delaware doesn't get the capital in Delaware. All it has is the corporate structure. It's just in a way like the Cayman Islands. You go to the Cayman Islands and despite thousands and thousands of corporations on the books, you don't see money in the Cayman Islands. Yeah. The money is booked in the Cayman Islands. The paper says it's owned by the Cayman Islands, but all the money and the action is somewhere else. Already starting to see, I think, the beginnings of, of high frequency company formation. By that I mean companies that are set up by com computers and that uh, uh, based on an algorithm. I mean, for a while you've had, had it said that companies would be set up, if you like, after the deal has been dreamt up, to, in order to have a, the most efficient structure, whether that's for tax or for regulation, for uh, in financial industry to do with uh, where the assets lie, uh, and so on. But, but now, uh, w we're starting to hear about use of computers and use of computer programs to do this automatically. And once you do that, then, then we're in a whole different realm. It's a, a question of, you know, a company could be set up in, 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 in seconds and, and, uh, and, and disappear, you know, uh, the next day, for example. And, and once you start, go down that route, we've seen that where that goes in terms of trading, uh, where, where it becomes less and less time. Uh, in order to, to execute, the, execute the deal, and, and, and in terms of monitoring it, it uh, becomes very difficult. The Global Witness did an investigation recently into money laundering, and they found out that companies have been set up where, uh, the, uh, where the people behind them were actually, had actually been dead by the time the company had been formed.